chaotic creative, squirrel syndrome, or neurodivergent. These are terms that are now being used to describe someone who always says they have 25 tabs open. It can be both a blessing and a curse because the constant flow of ideas can actually lead to a lack of focus, difficulty prioritizing, perfectionism, and a lack of productivity. Time management and maintaining structure are also an issue which can cause burnout. But fortunately, there are some flexible solutions and productivity strategies that can help you if I just described you. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Welcome to the Mind Your Time podcast with Shannon Baker. I'm your coffee-loving host and the founder of The Mighty Society. As a business strategist, I work with purpose-driven women looking to achieve personal and financial success, but they're struggling with organization and time management. Together, we're going to tackle those challenges head on so you can regain control of your business and your time. We're going to explore the strategies and tools you need to make your business more efficient so you can achieve sustainable growth while creating a more fulfilling business and personal life while achieving personal satisfaction and improving your overall well-being. Being busy is not a badge of honor, so get ready to be more intentional with your time and create success on your own terms. So grab your favorite beverage and let's dive into today's topic. Welcome to episode 134 of the Mind Your Time podcast. I'm actually very excited about today's topic because I just finished an evaluation of my ideal client as I wrapped up the first six months of my year with a review, even though it's a month late, but it's done. But as I looked over my current and former client list to refine my ideal customer description for my marketing plan for the rest of the year, I recognized a common trait among my favorite clients to work with. They leave me frustrated sometimes because I do love order in my life and in my business. But they hire me to help them get the same way, but in a way that works for them and their brain. They are the chaotic creative that have different levels of chaos that they work in. Without that, they don't thrive. But we have a lot of fun working together. Here's what Tamara Wellens had to say about working with me. She is an amazingly talented singer and songwriter in the Washington, D.C. area. But she said, and I quote, the most value for me has been the clarity in how I manage my operations. Being a solopreneur, you have your hands in a lot of different things, a lot of different ways. I've enjoyed going into my Google Drive and seeing things complete, done, and organized. I feel energized because I feel like I'm getting somewhere. Even though I have a long way to go, I'm telling you, it helps, end quote. Now, Tamara is a perfect example of what I'm referring to in today's topic. The common issue with chaotic creatives is that they are always generating ideas, but they struggle with organization, productivity, and consistency. Well, why? Because they never see an idea all the way through before you start working on another one. So if this is you, That means you have a ton of unfinished projects that you feel are good ideas. But honestly, are they? Not to mention, you really need to evaluate them and focus on them at the right time. But your brain isn't wired in a way that prompts you to do that. And that's why you need to work with someone who operates more logically to hold you accountable, help you get organized and stay that way, and help you create new habits that work for you. Now, that can be me or a business buddy that understands how you operate and think. But you can't make these changes on your own. But I've learned how to counteract your approach so that we can actually get things done. So today, I'm going to share some tips with you that are going to help you create a bit more structure in your life. But it also allows for the flexibility that you need. But most importantly, you're going to get results, create a more balanced, highly creative, strategic, and productive environment that allows for innovation. So let's start by talking about your time management. By improving your time management skills, you're going to start to lay a strong foundation that's going to help you handle all the other challenges you experience more effectively. The first step is to identify time wasters and inefficiencies in your day-to-day life and business operations. Here's an example. Think about creating an ideal week schedule. Map out how you would like to spend your time. 
Then block out the time you need for client work, business development, and self-care. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of how to do that today because I actually talked about this in last week's episode. But one of the tips that I shared about using the digital calendar is time blocking your schedule. So make sure you go back and listen to that episode. I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes. Now, you might be wondering, well, how do I pick the right priorities? Well, prioritizing tasks, staying organized, and avoiding distractions are the key to effective time management. So let's talk specifically about how you can do that because it's closely related to the goal that you're trying to achieve. As business owners, we all have personal commitments and non-negotiables in our lives that affect our work schedules. And it's important to consider these when setting goals for your business. Start by reviewing your calendar over the next 90 days and identifying any personal events or commitments that are going to have an impact on your schedule. This is going to help you identify the season that your life is in right now. And then over the next 90 days, pick a goal that fits that season. And this is vital because your priorities help you reach your goal. That's why I created a resource exclusively available to members of the Mighty Society membership. They're goal-setting worksheets, which will not only help you set realistic goals, but also includes pages for weekly planning using the time-blocking tips that I share. The pages in that download will really help you plan your next 90 days down to your weeks and your days every day to maximize your productivity. So feel free to check out the Mighty Society membership at theshannonbaker.com forward slash membership. And once you've identified your goal and create your action plan, you can make a daily to-do list to keep you focused. Then you take that list and rank everything based on urgency and important. But I don't want your list to include more than five tasks to begin with. Now, I know this process is going to take some practice because you have so many ideas and projects, and this concept is new to you. So after you make your list, focus on completing one thing at a time so that you can cross it off your list. Now, let's talk about perfectionism. I will be transparent and confess, I am a perfectionist in recovery. And one thing that I often struggle with is striving for perfection in my work. And that leads to procrastination or it delays me from actually marking a task as complete and ending projects for myself on time. But this also will make it difficult for you to delegate tasks to others. I've got a feeling you have some of the same issues. So here's how you can counteract that. Start by embracing a progress over perfection mindset. Done is definitely better than perfect. And one thing that has really helped me is noticing the progress that I make regularly and celebrating it. I've talked about my wall of wins in my office before, but I write my wins big and small on front of a little two by two card. And then I write the date of that accomplishment on the back. Then I clip it to the wall so that I can see it. Can you do something similar with sticky notes or even your journal if you're a journaler? But you also need to set realistic expectations for yourself. You cannot do everything, not without burning yourself out anyway. So acknowledge your abilities and your limitations. Then build a dream team that can balance out those limitations for you. And while we're on the topic of delegating, you got to learn to delegate tasks to others. This will free up your time so that you can focus on the revenue generating tasks and projects. But before you do that, you have to have standard operating procedures in place. Otherwise, it's not going to work out the way that you want and you're going to end up frustrated and so will that. Now, if you need help documenting your SOPs and identifying what tasks you can outsource efficiently, then you definitely need to book a solo power assessment or a back office assessment. I've talked about this a number of times in episodes. It even has its own episode, but it will help identify the areas of your business operations that need improvement so that you can reach your goals. And you receive a custom action plan that once it's implemented, you can take proactive steps to position yourself for long-term success. Feel free to go to theshannonbaker.com forward slash assessment to learn more about that. And you can also listen to the episode where I answer the question, what happens during a back office assessment on the podcast? A link to that will also be in the show notes. 
Now, everything that I've talked about up to this point is vital if you want to create a well-structured business that supports your lifestyle. So how can you make your business and life manageable? You simply need to establish better routines and clear boundaries between work and business. But in order for this to work for you, you've got to keep things flexible. Some people can't function without a very regimented daily structure. I'm one of those people, but I've come to appreciate that you are not. So I want you to think about things you like to do regularly to take care of yourself. Also think about things that you really enjoy doing in your business. Then create daily, weekly, and monthly routines for completing your personal and your business tasks. Now, if you focus on consistency with planning and doing less every day, you can stay organized and focused and get more accomplished. Now, before I wrap up, here are some of the key takeaways from today. You generate a lot of ideas, but you rarely see them through to completion. Improving your time management is essential to laying a strong foundation for your business so that you're free to handle other challenges and projects. You also need to identify time wasters and inefficiencies in your day-to-day life and business operations. And you have to establish better routines and clear boundaries between work and business so that you can manage both without being overwhelmed. You also need to counteract perfectionism by embracing a progress over perfection mindset, setting realistic goals, and learning to delegate tasks to others. Remember, It takes practice to build new habits, so you've got to be patient with yourself. Now, if you would like additional support and or guidance, definitely consider the Mighty Society. You're going to get access to exclusive goal-setting worksheets, the ones I talked about, and other resources like roadmaps, templates, and even more that are going to help you be more productive. The best part is that you can transform the way your business operates by joining and just investing 30 minutes a week in working on your business. So if you are ready to tackle this on your own, then be sure to join us inside. And as a podcast listener, there's a special offer for you. You can join for just $30 a month for the first three months. Then it returns to the founding members rate of $47 for the lifetime of your membership. To take advantage of this offer, click the link in the show notes or go to theshannonbaker.com forward slash membership and enter the code BETA, all caps. But if you'd rather have me take a look at your back office, tell you the gaps in your operations that need to be fixed and then help you fix them, then go ahead and book a back office assessment today. I currently have room for one more one-on-one client and we can get some systems in place that are gonna make a big difference in as little as two months. That means that you can enjoy some summer fun and your business will continue to operate without you. So go to theshannonbaker.com forward slash assessment to learn more about that and book yours today. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast for more valuable insights on productivity, entrepreneurship, and personal growth. I would like to thank you for tuning in. But before you go, I want to remind you that listening to this episode is not going to improve your business operations. So I challenge you to pick one thing that you're going to take action on today. If that means hopping on a call with me to get some questions answered about the back office assessment or anything else, that's okay. Or if you're not quite ready to take that step yet, then just connect with me on Instagram at the underscore Shannon Baker. You can also ask your questions there. Or just let me know that you enjoyed the episode by sharing it and tagging me. And I have a small favor to ask of you. If you haven't left a review for the podcast yet, please do so. It's an easy way to show the podcast some love and will help me reach more small business owners like you who can use the same kind of support that you're looking for. And I cannot wait to hear from you. So until next time, keep calm and streamlined.